Originate live with the NBC Television Network. NBC Sports presents the 1965 World Series. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the Minnesota Twins meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers. Brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the slim, adjustable razor. The Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. Foamy, the cream of all instant lathers. Right Guard, spray deodorant, and new Heads Up, hair dressing for men. And by Chrysler Canada Limited and its dealers who sell Imperial, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge and Fargo Trucks from Chrysler Canada Limited. Well, hi, everybody. This is Ben Scully along with Ray Scott, ready to bring you the fifth game of this 1965 World Series. The Gillette Safety Razor Company and Chrysler Corporation also bring you the All-Star Baseball Game, NCAA Football, and the 1966 Rose Bowl Game over the NBC Network in appreciation of your continued support. The fifth game of the World Series, and after four, it's as if it is now the best two out of three instead of the best four out of seven. And two better left-handers you're not going to find on the scene. Jim Cott, an 18-game winner from Minnesota, and the first left-hander in almost 30 years to win 26 games in the National League, Sandy Koufax. Koufax, of course, lost to Cott the first time around. We'll see about the second time. To fill you in on the Minnesota aspect of this fifth game, the voice of the Twins, here's Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Vin Scully, and hi again, everybody. If indeed the World Series is going to evolve itself into where you're playing, since the Twins, of course, won the two games played in their home ballpark, Metropolitan Stadium, and the Dodgers have won the two played here in Dodger Stadium, then, of course, the Twins feel they'll have the ultimate edge because this is the year that the American League team will have four games in its home ballpark and the National League team three if indeed the series goes to seven. I do believe that the Twin players have been a bit... Uh, upset at their play in yesterday's game and how it will affect today's game remains to be seen. But as Vin said, two great pitchers are matched today, Koufax and Cott. Vin, let's go back to you. All right, Ray. And first of all, this game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. Another big crowd, and this could be the hottest day of the series, game number five. It has come up hot and clear. And to take another look at Dodger Stadium and refresh your memory, it is 3.30 down the left field line, and it's a symmetrical ballpark. Falling away to 380, as you see. And way out where the big boys hit him, 410. The same way around to deep right center and right. And the visiting bullpen situated back of right field. The attendance for the first two games, we had 55,934 and 55,920. And another crowd of around 55,000 expected today. Some of the members of the bullpen contingent for the Minnesota Twins. And they had their first real airing yesterday when Alan Worthington and Bill Pleiss came in to relieve. And the day before when Jimmy Merritt and Johnny Klipstein came in. The Twins in the first two games had complete games from Jim Grant and Jim Cott. Talking about Jim Cott, there's the talented left-hander right now loosening up in front of the Minnesota dugout. Jim, an 18-game winner, 18 and 11, pitched a strong game to beat Sandy Koufax 5-1 in the second game of the series. And there is the same Koufax, 
who went six innings against the Twins, allowed two runs, only one of them earned. Sandy in World Series competition is two and two, and both of his defeats, he allowed only one earned run. He lost to the Chicago White Sox one to nothing, and then, of course, the final score of the game with Minnesota, five to one. The pregame meeting at home plate and the exchange of batting cards, and we'll take a look at the names on the Dodger card right now. Leading off the shortstop, Maury Wills. Jim Gilliam at third base. Willie Davis hitting third in center field. Lou Johnson in the cleanup spot against left-handers in left field. Ron Fairley in right field. Wes Parker will be at first base. Dick Trususki playing for the injured Jim Lefevre at second. Johnny Roseborough going all the way behind the plate in the series and Sandy Koufax, the pitcher. The fifth game of the 1965 World Series is being brought to you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Now you can wear your hair in simply dozens of delightful styles and know every hair will keep its place. Thanks to Adorn, the holdingest hairspray, Adorn never lets it do down. So let yourself go. Try your hair sleek and sultry with tantalizing side effects. Adorn it? Forget it. Adorn never lets a do down. Or be demure as a dimple. Style it sweet and simple. Adorn never lets a do down. And because Adorn works invisibly, all the natural luster, all the softness and highlights shine through. Your hair looks natural, acts natural, and mm, feels natural. So try all the new styles. Have fun. Keep your hair high in a pyramid of swirls and curls. Adorn never lets a do down. Adorn, the holdingest hairspray. The umpires have taken their respective positions, so we're very close to game time. So without further ado, here's the voice of the Minnesota Twins, Ray Scott. Thanks again, Vin. The umpiring assignments today at the home plate Bob Stewart of the American League, the National League's Ed Vargo at first, Ed Hurley of the American League at second, Tony Venson of the National League is at third. On the foul lines and left, John Flaherty of the American League, and from the National League, Ed Sudall along the right field line. Now the starting lineup before this, again, packed house at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, and incidentally, the weatherman has been most kind today. Brilliant sunshine much warmer day than we have had the last two days here in Los Angeles. And let's take a look at the Twins. The shortstop leading off, Zoil over Saez. The center fielder, Joe Nosek. Batting third, the right fielder, Tony Oliva. Harmon Killebrew again in the cleanup spot, the Twins' third baseman. Earl Batty will catch today and bat in the number five spot. The left fielder, Bob Allison, bats six. First baseman, Don Mincher, in the seventh spot. The second baseman, Frank Pulisi, bats number eight. And left-hander, Jim Cott, regular season record, 18 wins, 11 losses. A winner in the second game of the World Series over Koufax as the Twins won that one 5-1. to one. The color guard, poised. If there is such a thing as having the advantage by playing at home this World Series has certainly proven it and in fact the manner of play when uh, in the confines of your own ballpark has uh, certainly followed a parallel here as the Twins won the opener 8-2 to two. the second game 5-1 to one. that was the first matching of Koufax and Cott and then the scene shifted here to Dodger Stadium, and Claude Osteen came up with a brilliant five-hitter, shutting out the Twins 4 to nothing. Don Drysdale gaining revenge over Jim Grant as the Dodgers won yesterday 7-2, to two, and so the stage is set for the fifth game of the World Series. The color guard out in the outfield right now. From our center field camera... Our national anthem today will be sung by Eddie Fisher. The color guard is from the United States Air Force Station of Los Angeles. Both Koufax and Cod are continuing to warm up. 
We've had a very interesting uh, variety as far as those throwing out the first pitch. For example, for this fifth game today, the younger generation will be represented. A pitcher for the Long Beach Pony League champions, Craig Swan, will be throwing out the first ball today. In fact, we had one game in the World Series where because of the weather, there was no first ball thrown out. The governor of Minnesota uh, apparently decided that wet weather and cold weather, cool weather at least, was not his dish. Here's the announcement now on the public address system. That radio and television recording star Eddie Fisher will sing our national anthem. We invite you to join us. By the dawn early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last evening, moon broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly free, and the rocket's red flare, the bump bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Perfect afternoon. The fifth game of the World Series will be played. Young Craig Swan is being introduced. And the crowd being told of his pitching exploits, which included a no-hitter. And so he and Sandy Koufax have something in common. Koufax has completed his warm-up chores. Jim Cott is still throwing up. Craig Swan. Pitcher for the Pony League champions from Long Beach, California. <laughs> Who's shook? We pause briefly for station identification. If you play center field at Dodger Stadium and the ball comes off the bat, you must find it somewhere in that background. It presents quite a chore. Joe Nasik, who is playing in center field today for the Twins, remarked before the start of the first game here at Dodger Stadium of the World Series, the third game of the series, that he was hoping the sun would not come out because uh, he felt that with the haze, uh, an outfielder had a chance some sort of a background would be provided. But today, the weatherman has dictated that we will have brilliant sunshine. This 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. A look now at the Dodgers in the field. At first base, Wes Parker. Dick Trzuski at second. Mari Wills at short. Jim Gilliam at third. Lou Johnson is the left fielder. Willie Davis in center. Ron Fairley in right. John Roseboro, the catcher. And on the mound, Sandy Koufax. 
Quinn coaches Jim Lemon getting in position at first. And Billy Martin is at third. Ben, I wonder if I could ask you a question here as the Twins Versailles comes to the plate. I, I don't believe that, uh, or I believe that there are many of our fans who are not really aware of the condition of Sandy's arm as far as what he must do to get ready to pitch a game. Well, Ray, in essence, it is referred to as a traumatic arthritic condition. And although he warms up the usual time 20 minutes, it sometimes will take him four innings to get ready. And he said that in Minnesota on that kind of wet gray day, he really didn't feel right until the sixth inning. One of the standout players in this World Series, Zoilo Versailles, starts it off along with his counterpart at shortstop for the Dodgers, Mari Wills. Versailles has six base hits in the series and 17 at bats. So he and Wills leading in that particular department. Gilliam tied at third and the first pitch of the fifth game. An attempted at bunt is fouled back for strike one. When Versailles faced Koufax in the second game of the series, he was 0 for 3 against Koufax, but he did triple in the seventh inning against Peronoski. A ball, one and one. I asked Sandy about the second time around. This is what he said. Well, the second time that you face the ball club, uh, you do have uh, an idea of what kind of hitters they are a little bit better than you do the first time. Of course, they have uh, an idea of what kind of pitcher you are. You just hope that uh, you have your good stuff and your good control. Two and two to Versailles. Getting a look at the Koufax fastball. Versailles has homered, tripled, doubled, and has three singles. To short, to first, one away. The twin center fielder, Joe Nasek, platooning in center with Jimmy Hall in manager Sam Mealy's scheme of things for World Series play. Joe in the series has shown himself to be a fine outfielder and at the plate has three hits and eight at bats. Curve for a strike. Nasik against Kopax singled, flied out, and sacrificed in the second game of the series. Low one and one. The Dodgers are 4 and 0 oh in Dodger Stadium in World Series play and in Los Angeles overall 6 of 7. Deep into the hole, the Wills off balance throw in time. Oh, there is a strong arm. Wills throwing off balance to get the speedy Nasik. And with two down, here is Tony Oliva. Oliva, three hits, 16 at bats in the series, including a home run yesterday. Oliva doubled in three trips and knocked in a run in the second game of the series when Koufax was pitching. Oliva inevitably digs in at the plate physically. That back foot is right on the line. Low ball one. It is almost as though Tony prefers a starting block. Gilliam is playing him very close to the bag of third. One and one.
In the second game of the series, Koufax retired seven twins before the twins came up with a base runner, and that was on a walk. Koufax. Out. The twins are retired. One, two, three. And so at the end of the first half inning, the score is the twins nothing, and the Dodgers coming to bat. Not long ago, the stainless steel blade was one of the best razor blades you could buy. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade. Because of this, the Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless blade. The new Gillette Super Stainless is better than any other blade you've ever used because of two things. A new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge and a smooth new coating, more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. The Twins defensively. At first base, Don Mincher. Second base, Frank Pulisi. The shortstop, Zoilo Versailles. The third baseman, Harmon Killebrew. Bob Allison is in left. Joe Nasik in center. Tony Oliva in right. Earl Batty is the catcher. And Jim Cott is on the mound. First base coach is Danny Ozark for the Dodgers. And a third, Preston Gomez. Last to the first and no score. Strike one. Wills, six for 17 and two runs batted in. Breaking ball a bit low, one and one. Note the Twins' inner defense against Wills. Only Versailles close to normal position. Fair ball. Ground rule double. Wills now is the first player in the series with seven hits. And now the second member of the Dodger infield, Jim Gilliam. Two for 15. This is just about the maximum Dodger threat. Wills on second, nobody out, and Gilliam up. Ball one. The Dodgers did not get a hit off Cott until the fifth inning of the second game of the series. One and one. Wills has stolen two bases. The Dodgers as a team have stolen five in the series, whereas the Twins have stolen just one. Cod is rated as one of the real top competitors. Fields his position extremely well. And he has all the pitches. Ball two, two and one. Killebrew is even with third. Ball three. Cott walked one and struck out three while allowing seven hits. First time around against the Dodgers. Foul. 
three and two. Cott in the regular season worked 264 and a third innings and struck out 154. Jim Cott had to say about the way he intended to pitch against the Dodgers today. Regardless of the size of the stadium, I'm going to try to pitch the same type of ball game I did in Met Stadium last week. Uh, over the first four games, the pitchers who have had the most success are those who have thrown strikes and stayed ahead of the hitters, and this will be my plan today. And so the Dodgers take a one nothing lead. Gilliam has his first RBI of the season. And here is Willie Davis. Four hits, 16 at bats in the series. Killebrew. And the ball beyond Pulisic. Gilliam is around third. Davis at third. It is two to nothing. It is a sacrifice and an error charged to the second baseman, Willisey. And so the Dodgers have a two to nothing lead. On third base is Willie Davis, still nobody out, and here is the left fielder, Lou Johnson. And the Twins are going to start warm up activity in the bullpen. the edge of the grass. Ball one. Johnson five for 14 including a home run. Dave Boswell 20 year old twins right hander starts working in the bullpen. Foul one and one. A double a single, a sacrifice, an error, and the Dodgers have not only a 2 nothing lead, but a runner at third with no outs, and Versailles decides it's time to talk to Jim Cott. Twins outfield well around to the left. Willisey, the second baseman, calling. One out. And now Ron Fairley. His single yesterday knocked in two runs and moved the Dodgers from a three to two lead to a five to two lead. In the series, five hits, 16 at bats, and four runs batted in. Earl Batty is conferring with Cott. Two nothing, the Dodgers lead in the first inning. Willie Davis at third and one away. The infield remains at the edge of the grass 
on the left side. Back about one step off the infield grass on the right side. Tony Oliva has a great arm. Davis has great speed. And he's held at third. Two down. Davis made only the token move to the plate. And with two down, the first baseman, Wes Parker. Five for 11 in the series, including a homer. The Twins infield moves back now at short, second, and first. Ball one. Cott not working out of the full windup with the Speedy Davis on third. Fastball outside, ball two. Breaking ball over two and one. Batty showing extreme confidence in Cott's ability to get the breaking ball over behind two and oh. Cott out at first, and the Dodgers are retired but score twice. And so at the end of the first inning, the score is the Dodgers two, the Twins nothing. A new kind of shave. A new kind of shave. You can only get when you shave all the way with Gillette. Only Gillette has the slim with razor. Look great. Feels great. This slim molded handle gives you better grip, better balance, better control. This trim head makes shaving those hard to reach places so much easier. The slim twist opens one handed. Insert a precision-made Gillette blade with the other hand. Twist again, the blade is locked in perfectly. Only Gillette blades and razors were made for each other. You get... A new kind of shave you can only get when you shave all the way with Gillette. Now is the time to get your new Gillette Slim Twist razor, complete with Gillette blades, in this handy slim case. Only $1.49. Next Saturday, NBC will telecast one of the top college football games of the year when Texas meets Arkansas. At 4 Eastern Time, 3 Central Time, live and in color, exclusively on NBC. And remember, before each college football game, the Bud Wilkinson NCAA preview show. Sandy Koufax, presented with a 2-0 lead after one inning, will face Harmon Killebrew, Earl Batty, and Bob Allison in the Twins' second inning. Killebrew has four hits and 11 at bats, including a home run yesterday. High ball one. Killebrew collected two hits and three trips against Koufax in the second game of the series. Strike one and one. One and two. Got to look at the fastball that time. Twins were retired in order in the first inning. Strike out. One down in the Twins' second inning. And here is Earl Batty. Koufax in six innings in the second game of the series struck out nine, walked one, and allowed six hits. Earl Batty, two hits, 14 at bats. Foul back, strike one. The 
small fry in the stadium, I think, will not be watching Batty for a moment. They have their eye on that ball. One and one. Dodger center fielder Willie Davis in this series has consistently, consistently played Batty as an opposite field hitter. Foul back, one and two. It's always interesting to speculate just how important the run represented by Willie Davis at third with one out that failed to get home. Interesting to think about uh, later on how big a run it will be. Two and two. Into right, Ron Fairley. Two down. The left fielder, Bob Allison, comes to the plate. Contributed one of the outstanding defensive plays in at least recent World Series history. And it came in the second game of the series. And it's generally believed that catch turned the whole game around. Ball one high. Allison one for seven. Two. Two and all. Despite a 233 regular season batting average, Allison knocked in 78 runs and homered 23 times. Two and one. a high fastball. <laughs> Second strikeout for Colfax. Six twins in a row have been retired. At the end of an inning and a half, the score, the Dodgers two, the twins nothing. Stop. You need a stainless steel blade. Getting a good shave. The best possible shave. You sure? When you bought it, the stainless steel blade was one of the best in the world. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade. Thanks to this. The Gillette Super Stainless. The totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. What makes it so much better than ordinary stainless steel blades? A new high-chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge. And a smooth new coating more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. In the midst of our World Series game, we'd like to pass along our good wishes to all those in Canada who are today celebrating Thanksgiving. Lefty Jim Cott, with his team trailing two to nothing in the last of the second, faces the bottom third of the order. Trzuski, Roseboro, and Koufax. Ball one. Trzuski, the Dodgers' second baseman, hitless in six at bats. He replaced Jim Lefevre who came up with a severely bruised foot and has been unable to play since. I beg your pardon, I said 0 for 6, Trzuski's 0 for 7. <laughs> Safe. Versailles with a great play in the hole and just missed getting his man by an eyelash. The twin shortstop.
Here's a look at that play again. First base umpire Ed Bargo with a safe sign, and Trzuski is no longer hitless. The third hit off Cott, and here's Roseboro. Strike one. Roseboro, four hits, 14 at bats, three runs batted in. An intense look at third base coach Preston Gomez by Roseboro. Mincher holding with the runner. Strike. Breaking ball outside corner at the knees. Roseboro says, wait a minute, look at that ball. Just missing at the knees. Ball one, strike two. Foul away. Dodgers have hit three home runs in the series. The Twins have hit four. Curve low, 2-2. Two, two. If a ball should be hit back to Cott, notice how he'll make his throw to second. Safe. I did not think in terms of a line drive. But there you can see the play at second and half in replay on the throw to Versailles. So runners first and second and nobody out. What I was referring to is the fact that despite Jim Cott being an excellent fielder, one of the very best among the pitchers, he has had trouble in making his throw to second base. And as a result, Jim over and again has said that after having this difficulty, he decided he would take his time and concentrate on getting just the head man instead of worrying about the double play. But that's down the drain now because they're runners at first and second, no outs, and here's Kopax. Almost thrown away. Versailles making a great save. An infield single and a fielder's choice and runners at first and second. Strike. Kofax as a batsman in the series, 0 for 2. That's Versailles straddling the bag at second. Batty could not quite get to it. Strike two. Dodgers two, the Twins nothing. Last of the second, two on and no outs. And caught desperately trying to keep this game in hand. He pitched out of a big trouble spot in the first inning. The Dodgers had two runs in and a runner at third with no outs. And he kept the runner nailed at third while retiring the last three men. Twins are still anticipating a bunt. Just inside, ball one.
Preston Gomez has relayed manager Walter Alston's wishes in this situation. The Twins believe that uh, Kopax will be bunting. Strikeout. One away. And to the plate comes Mari Will. Seven hits. 18 at bats. Doubled in the first inning and scored on Gilliam's follow up single. It was the second double for Wills in the series. Runner to third, and he is out. Krasuski out. Roseboro in at second. Watch the runner now on the instant replay. Trzuski. Third base umpire, Tony Benson, makes the call. So two down. The first pitch taken for ball one by Wills. Ball two. Quillacy to Mincher. Cott pitches out of trouble and the Dodgers are out. And so at the end of the second inning, the score, the Dodgers two. The twins, nothing. See this man? He's using a stainless steel blade. Has since they were introduced. He thinks they're great. Yet, he'll never buy another one. Nope. He'll never buy another ordinary stainless steel blade. Because the Gillette Super Stainless is here. The totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade made of a new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge with a smooth new coating more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. Bob Hope, Roger Miller, and Mary Tyler Moore join Andy Williams tonight at 10, 9 Central Time on the Andy Williams Show, immediately following Dr. Kildare in color here on NBC. In the Twins' third, Don Mincher, Frank Quillacy, and Jim Cott to face Sandy Koufax as the Dodgers lead by 2 to nothing. Koufax has struck out two. The Twins uh, have not been able to come up with a base runner. Mincher, three hits, 14 at bats. Singled in three trips against Koufax first time around. Strike two. Shallow right field, Willie Davis coming in, and the center fielder will make the catch in right center. Seven in a row retired by Koufax, and here is Quillacy. At the same stage of the game, when Koufax worked the second game of the series, Quillacy became the Twins' first base runner by walking. In the series, the Twins' second baseman has had two hits in 12 trips. but no hits since the first game. Strike. Outside, one and one.
Setup delivery, strike call. Strikeout number three. And with two down in the third, here is Jim Cott. Colfax struck out Cott twice. Later on in that game, Cott singled and knocked in two runs. But Colfax had departed. Cott likes to bunt for a base hit. Strike two. Foul back on the bunt attempt. Another strikeout. Nine in a row retired by Kopax. So at the end of two and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers two and the Twins nothing. You wouldn't think of buying a dress too small or a sandwich too big. You wouldn't have a mop too short or eyelashes too long. You insist your glasses fit right. Your cake bakes light. But what about your pen? Size counts there too and just as much. Size makes writing easy or hard, cramped or comfortable. That's why Papermate designed the three different sized, shaped, and weighted pens in the Papermate Profile Trio. That one's the slim, light, responsive, smart. That's the husky, real heft and weight, substantial. And the regular, average size and weight, the one most people like. Three pens, three sizes, shapes, and weights. The Papermate Profile Trio. Pick the one that's right for you. Jim Gilliam had some thoughts about the way Jim Cott would pitch to him today. Here's what he said. Well, the series is all even now, and uh, it's been pretty rough on me up to that plate right now. This Cott uh, pitched me pretty good the last time I faced him, but I hope to have better success with him this time. In Minnesota, he moved the ball around on me pretty well. He was in and out, uh, down and uh, in. Uh, uh, he just pitched, uh, pitched me very good in Minnesota. Gilliam singled off Cott in the first inning and knocked in a run. Strike on the breaking ball. Killebrew to Mincher. If it is true that a pitcher thrives on trouble, then Cott's one of the thrivingest pitchers in a long while. He's had nothing but trouble today. Pitched out of a big trouble spot in the first inning and another jam in the second. Here's Willie Davis. Willie up to sacrifice in the first inning, wound up on third base when Killebrew's throw on his sacrifice attempt got away from Frank Willisley. There's a base hit to right. And for Davis, his fifth hit in the series. Hit number four off Cott. Here's Lou Johnson. Popped up to the second baseman in the first inning. Runner going. Throw very high, safe. Want to watch it again? Twenty five stolen bases for Davis in the regular season, his first of the World Series. And 
it's three to nothing. Johnson's third run batted in as he belted the off-speed pitch into straightaway center. So the Dodgers have a three to nothing lead and with one out and Johnson on first, here's Ron Fairley. Sent a fly ball to shallow right in the first inning. For the second time in this game, Dave Boswell is up in the Twins' bullpen. Strike. Boswell has a very important date coming up on Saturday. He'll be married. Inside, one and one. Runner going. They hit. Johnson a third being waved in. Headed for the dugout. And manager Sam Mealy is headed for the mound. Fairley has taken over the lead in the World Series and runs batted in. That's his fifth. And the call to the bullpen. And here's what Sam Mealy had to say before today's game started. We uh, certainly are not discouraged just because we lost two straight. We uh, know that the Dodgers are a good ball club. Uh, we've bounced back all season long. I feel that uh, we can do it again. We're going with a fellow that beat the Dodgers uh, in our own ballpark, and uh, we beat the fellow pitching against us, and I think that uh, we have a good chance of winning uh, this ball game. We we are aware of the type of the play that the Dodgers are, do are playing. We know that they run real well. And we played against them uh, that accordingly. We will do so in this game also. Uh, we have to shorten up a little bit more in the infield, but uh, we've done it in our own part. And yesterday's ball game was one of those ball games that could happen to any team on any occasion. But uh, we play a little poorly, I must admit. But then again, uh, a lot of other ballparks have played poorly. They play a little poorly in our ballpark. So things look uh, bright as far as I'm concerned. Dave Boswell, 20 years old, takes over from lefty Jim Cott. So Cott, a winner, the first time against the Dodgers, is knocked out after two and a third innings and is hit hard. Cott gave up six hits, struck out one, didn't walk anybody. Boswell comes on with a Dodger runner at second, fairly. Two runs in in the third inning and one out. Boswell missed a month of the regular season. He had an attack of mononucleosis. He won six and lost five, and in 106 innings allowed only 77 hits. He had some trouble with his control, walked 46, struck out 85. His earned run average was 3.40. He has a fine fastball, and he throws a great change. And I'd like to make a correction right now while young Boswell is warming up. Earlier, we said that on the Andy Williams show tonight at 10 that you could watch Bob Hope, Roger Miller, and Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Not so. You can watch them at 9 Eastern and 8 Central Time. That's the Andy Williams Show right after Dr. Kildare in color here on NBC.
June a year ago, Boswell was in high school. This is his second year in baseball. And he faces Wes Parker, thrown out by Cott on a good fielding play in the first inning. So Boswell will try to stem the flow of Dodger runs as it's 4 0 Los Angeles. Strike one, the fastball. One and one. Barely at second. To Mincher, unassisted and fairly moves to third. Two down. The second baseman, Dick Krasuski, comes to the plate, an infield hit in the second inning. Ben, I think our good viewers, and, and you'll appreciate this, Dave is a completely uninhibited young man. He says exactly what comes to his mind. And first time he saw Yankee Stadium, he was in a Twins uniform, and he came out of the dugout, looked around. He said, is this where I see the Yankees when they're on television? And somebody said, yeah, it's Yankee Stadium. Killebrew near the Dodger dugout. Bounces high on the dugout and out of play. One and one. <laughs> Vin just... Catch Killebrew in case he made that fatal step into the dugout was Mari Wills. And if I've ever seen... A mismatch based on weight. It's Killebrew being caught by Wills. Ball two, strike one. Dave Boswell on in relief of Jim Cott here in the Dodger third inning with the Dodgers leading 4 0. Runner at third, fairly. Two out, and the batter, Trzuski. Three and one. Ron Fairley edging away from third. Ball four. So with Dodger runners at first and third, here's John Roseboro. Sent a hot smash back to Cott in the second inning with a runner on first. Cott had trouble for an instant finding the ball, and his throw to second was late. And so Roseboro was a base runner on the fielder's choice. Don Mincher motioning... Uh, to the Twins' dugout about something, the Twins' first baseman. Strike one. Fairly. Trzuski, third and first. Breaking ball inside, one and one. Twins outfield, shading Roseboro to the right. He's had four hits in the series. Foul 
Fastball outside, two and one. Sandy Kopax is on deck. Sandy. Foul away on the left side, 2-2. Two, two. The Twins will have the top of the order up in the fourth inning. Fairley, who doubled, is now third. Strikeout. The safe call made at third. Third out. But it didn't make any difference. That would have been the fourth out if they'd have nailed him. So at the end of the third inning, the score is the Dodgers four, the Twins nothing. We pause for station identification. A packed house. And a beautiful day in Los Angeles as the hometown favorite Dodgers down two games to none in the World Series have not only battled back to a 2-2 tie but the Dodgers have presented Kopax with a 4-0 lead after three innings. Kopax has struck out four. Twins have yet to get a man on and here in the fourth inning it'll be Versailles, Nosek, and Oliva. Versailles grounded out short to first in the first inning. Was tied with Mari Wills for most hits in the series at the start of the game, but Wills has doubled and now has seven hits. Johnson has six hits now, fairly six. nineteen sixty five World Series game being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC strike one and one the only man to fashion four no hitters Sandy Kopax very high ball two two and one. Shallow right, Ron Fairley. Shielding his eyes from the glare, and that's ten in a row, retired by Kopax. Ben, if you don't mind, I wonder if you'd repeat a comment you made between innings about when a man is great, as Kopax uh, has proven himself to be in his particular art, of how much is expected of him. For example, when the count went to ball two and no strikes on Allison. Yeah, they groan here like uh, something's terribly wrong. <laughs> Joe Nosick chasing the high fastball for strike one. Nosick was retired on a fine fielding play by shortstop Mari Wills in the first inning. 
an off-balance throw that nailed the speedy twin center fielder. Foul back, strike two. Short to first. Two down. And now, Tony Oliva tried to bunt his way on in the first inning and was thrown out by Koufax. Oliva has had three hits in 17 trips. Tony's the first American leaguer to win consecutive batting championships since Ted Williams. Strike one. Dodgers four, the Twins nothing. Fourth inning, two out, none on. Strike one to Tony Oliva. appreciative crowd of Koufax's efforts here today. Foul away. From what little I've had a chance to watch Colfax, it just seems to me that Dodger fans are sort of tuned in to Sandy's frequency. They react to everything he does. Foul. Check to swing in time. Ball one. Kofax struck out Killebrew and Allison in the second. Quillacy and Cott in the third. Cott trying to bunt his way on, fouled back the third strike. Colfax. So the end of three and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers four, the Twins nothing. Not long ago, the stainless steel blade was one of the best razor blades you could buy. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade. Because of this, the Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. The new Gillette Super Stainless is better than any other blade you've ever used because of two things. A new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge and a smooth new coating, more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. Well, all of us have been privileged to see something special so far today in this fifth game of the World Series. There's a man appreciating what Sandy Koufax is doing, and his name is Drysdale. 
Yesterday, Koufax was the fan, and Drysdale was the pitcher with the outstanding performance. And here is Koufax, the batter. As a batsman in the second inning, struck out. Strike one. Strike two. The Twins pitcher is Dave Boswell. Came on in the third inning in relief of starter Jim Cott. Boswell walked one man and struck out one as he finished up the third inning. Strike three. Colfax just sort of nodded his head as if to say a very fine pitch, young man. Here's Mari Wills. Doubled in the first and scored the first run of the game. Grounded out second to first in the second. The Dodgers have a four to nothing lead. Seeking a sweep here in Dodger Stadium. Versailles. Safe. Eight hits for Wills in the series. Want to see it again? Close but safe. Wills has stolen two bases in the series. With one away, the batter is Gilliam. Batting from the right side against Cott, singled and grounded out. His single knocked in a run, and you can hear the crowd chanting to Will. They want to see him go. Now Boswell has a quick move to first. best of my knowledge this is the first time that Wills has had a look at Boswell and vice versa so a few things are being checked out Boswell so far has done everything but throw the ball over left-handed. Gilliam wants some rosin. In Boswell, the Twins believe they have a real nugget. They think he can be one of the good ones. say this Boswell has been high with every throw to first it's about ball six going to first base one out and Gilliam still hasn't had a chance to see Boswell's delivery and the runner goes ball into center field it again. It was a good throw except that it was high. Had the ball been held, it would have been close. 
a Dodger club record for steals in a World Series has just been set. Seven in seven games in 1947. And a man to the name of Pee Wee Reese has just been tied. Outside, one and one. The first pitch, a strike to Gillian. Jammingham, ball one, strike two. Twin players have a great appreciation of Mari Will's tremendous skills as a base runner. play still one and two Just a bit high with a let up delivery, two and two. Seven Dodger hits today. Will he try to go to third? If there were a vote in the stands, Wills would go to third on a balk. I doubt that there's ever been one man who has worried so many. It is five to nothing. Gilliam's second RBI of the day. Here's Willie Davis. Base runner in the first when he sacrificed and Killebrew's throw escaped Quillacy singled to right in the third, stole second, and scored. Ball one high. Five to nothing, Los Angeles, last of the fourth. Gilliam on first, one out. Safe. Killebrew in tight at third. Outside, ball two. Second, no chance for the relay. Two down. And here's Lou Johnson. Topped up in the first, 
not going to run in the third. Today's attendance has just been flashed on the scoreboard. 55,801. Just under yesterday's attendance by a little over 100. Ball one. The first day at Dodger Stadium, 55,934. 14 fewer yesterday. And 55,801 today for a total attendance. I'll give that in a moment. There goes the runner, and what a jump. Woody Davis crawling the last 20 feet. had a late throw been made, they might have gotten him. See what you think. See him fall? I'm trying to figure out, Ben, what stroke he used there. Davis's second stolen base of the game. One and one to Johnson. Fumble, but in time. The Dodgers are out. Score one, leave one on. And so at the end of four innings, the score, the Dodgers five. The Twins nothing. Who's been using my right guard? Papa. I confess. Me too, Daddy. Relax, Harry. There's an extra one downstairs, and I've got right guard on my shopping list. Gillette Right Guard Power Spray Deodorant is just right for the whole family because nothing touches you but the spray itself. Two seconds gives you 24-hour protection. Buy Right Guard in this new decorator container. Now another Gillette product. Try Gillette Heads Up. The new clean kind of men's hairdressing. The new clean kind of hairdressing that mixes with the natural conditioning elements of your hair and scalp, the way no greasy dressing can. So your hair looks naturally neat and handsome. Shampoo clean. Try Gillette Heads Up, the new clean kind of men's hairdressing. New Heads Up by Gillette, the people who know man best. Facts before today's game. Well, I really was impressed with Sandy's curveball when he pitched in Minnesota. He's got probably one of the greatest uh, curveballs that I've ever seen from a left-hand pitcher. And, of course, he's got that real good fastball to go along with the good curve. Killebrew went down swinging in the second inning, one of five strikeout victims of Kopax. Four inning totals, five runs, eight hits, the Dodgers. No runs, no hits, the Twins. The one error in the game committed by the Twins. Strike one to Killebrew. High one and one. Thank you, Vin. The total attendance for the series, 264,152. 167,655 here at Dodger Stadium. And the scene will shift to the home ground of the Twins Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, on Wednesday. Strike two. Recall Killebrew in his pregame discussion said he was impressed with the curve. Shallow center and Davis lost it. But he got it and then dropped it. He lost the ball in the sun. And Davis is still on the ground. It was obvious that Davis had lost that ball. He hesitated, and to the best of my knowledge, he got the ball in his glove, but he couldn't hold on to it. It is through the base hit, and the crowd here reacts to that decision. And there is the first twin hit. A pop fly single to center. 
A ball that Willie Davis just plain lost. The batter is Earl Batty, flight out to right in the second inning. Base runner number one for the Twins. Mari Wills, out, out. Just like that, two are out. And here's Allison, struck out in the second. An attempted bunt, foul for strike one. Strike two. Low for a ball, one and two. In the dirt again, two and two. Get a base hit, but leave none on. And so at the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the Dodgers five and the Twins nothing. The second half of today's World Series game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Your Chrysler Canada dealer presents Hit Parade for 66, a lineup of cars that are bound to lead the parade. Exciting Chrysler. Move up. Enjoy the Chrysler way of life. Big Dodge. Dodge gives you more than ever before. More size, more comfort, more pride. It's a lot more car for your money. Swinging Coronet by Dodge. Coronet's a new idea from Dodge. Plymouth. Twice the Tiger for 66. There's the hot new Belvedere. A smart new Sizzler from Plymouth. Then there's the big new Plymouth Fury. Nothing goes like Fury. Spirited Valiant. Nobody beats Valiant for value. See them all now at your Chrysler Canada dealers during Hit Parade 66. We move to the last of the fifth inning and here to take you along the rest of the way. The voice of the Dodgers, Vin Scully. And you know, Vin, and I, I don't know whether it's old hat to you or not watching yet another masterpiece by Sandy Koufax, but as one who doesn't get a chance to see him very often, uh, I just can't say enough about this game he's pitching. Thank you, Ray, and hi, everybody. Strike one to Fairley. Fairley has flied to right and doubled one for two. Five runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for the Twins. One error. Way to the backstop. So Boswell, just a kid, can experiment. That's the second one he's had get away. One and one. Koufax, of course, is the only man in baseball to pitch four no-hitters, and he already has a perfect game tucked away. Ball two. Two 
and one. Two and two. Dodgers five, twins nothing here in the bottom of the fifth, fifth game of the World Series. Dave Boswell in relief of starter Jim Codd. Ball three. Parker on deck, followed by Trususki. Line to center, Nosek in a hurry, but it's a base hit. So Ron Fairley has come alive. He's two for three today. Fairley had one hit yesterday and a double the day before. Nine hits for the Dodgers. Parker looking for his first and Roseboro and Colfax. The other six men in the lineup have at least one apiece. Wills, Gilliam, and Fairley have two apiece. Ball one. Dodgers scored twice in the first, twice in the third, once in the fourth. Killebrew in on the grass. Fairly goes, hit and run, and a fly ball to left field and deep. Allison goes back, makes the catch, and Fairly hustles back to first base. So playing hit and run, but Parker went the other way, fly deep to left. Give you an idea, that's very close to being a home run in Minnesota. Here's Krasuski, infield single and walk. Versailles making a great play to even get the ball in the second inning. Ball one, throw to first, almost threw it away. Nice save by Don Minchu. We asked Earl Batty about whether his sore neck bothered his throwing, but he said no. Yesterday, he was unable to move his head from side to side. He was able to do it today. Fouled away. One and one. The Minnesota Twins will head for home after the ball game. The Dodgers will stay in Los Angeles, work out here at Dodger Stadium tomorrow, and then fly out to Minnesota. A reminder, tune in Wednesday, 2.45 Eastern Daylight Time, for the sixth game of this 1965 World Series. Miss the bunt. One and two. Five runs, nine hits, and no errors for the Dodgers. No runs. One hit for the Twins. Two and two. Johnny Roseboro on deck. Slow curve miss. Ball three. Now we'll see if the Dodgers play run and hit. Trasuski has a look at Gomez. Again, the difference between hit and run and run and hit. Hit and run, the batter is obligated to swing no matter where the ball is. Run and hit, of course, he is not. No reason to swing at ball four. Fairly goes. And a drive to left. Allison goes back, turns, makes the major leaguers catch. And fairly back to first, and he has to hurry. Boy, Bob Allison made a fine play. That perhaps was not 
as eye-catching and dramatic as the sliding catch in Minnesota, but believe me, that's a major league play. On a day like today particularly, Allison had to take his eye off the ball, go about 15 to 20 feet, turn and find it. And sometimes to find it here, you have to put an ad in the paper. <laughs> that was quite a play. Ball one. Roseboro sacrificed and struck out. He's 0 for 1. Dodgers 5. Twins nothing in the fifth. With Mincher, Quillacy, and Boswell spot due up in the sixth. Johnny out in front of the off speed pitch, 1 and 1. Roseboro is nicknamed on the club Gabby because he's so quiet. A little high, two and one. Young Dave Boswell has allowed just one run since coming into the game in the third inning. Jim Cott went two and a third innings, allowed four runs and six hits. Two and two. Sandy Koufax on deck. Ball three. With two out, of course, Fairley will be going three and two. The Dodgers would like to get Roseboro on, if nothing else, than to get Koufax out of the way so that they could start off the sixth inning with Wills. <laughs> Dodgers five, twins nothing, two out, bottom of the fifth. Final game here, next stop, Minnesota. Fairly goes. Fouled away. Duran getting in shape going down. There was a hit and run play and Parker fly deep to left. He had rounded second and hustled back. It was a run and hit play with Krasuski. He raced to second base and had to hustle back just ahead of Allison's throw. And he's going three and two with Roseboro. He'd be a couple of inches shorter. Ball four, so they get Koufax to the plate. Sandy will get an ovation. He owns this town. Not only Los Angeles, Sandy's the only pitcher I've ever seen who gets an ovation in every park in the National League when he comes out of the dugout to warm up. It's somewhat like the maestro ascending the podium. 4-1. As a batter, he has left something to be desired. He struck out twice. Two out, two on. Five nothing Dodgers, bottom of the fifth. Foul ball. Boswell has not worked prior to today in the series. It's been a while since he has worked, so he might be tiring a little now. He figures to be Dave's last inning of work anyway. He'll bat third when the Twins hit in the sixth. 
Thurley at second. Roseboro at first. Two out, fifth inning, five nothing Dodgers. All three. So the runners go again. And it means for the fourth time in the inning, Ron Fairley is going on a pitch. There they go. Strike three call. No runs are hit. The Dodgers leave two. And at the end of five innings of play, the score, the Dodgers five, the Twins nothing. the wind with 440 cubic inches of scorching V8 power. Dodge corners like it's on rails. Dodge rides like velvet on a road smoothing 121 inch wheelbase. Dodge is a very exciting car. Thrill to Dodge soon. It's a lot of car. It's the most car in the popular price field. Get Dodge for 66. To the sixth inning, five to nothing Dodgers. A reminder, who is Melody Johnson? She's an enchanting, exciting new star. Where can you see her? Wednesday evening when Bob Hope presents the Chrysler Theater with special guest Mickey Rooney at 9, 8 central time. Sandy Koufax has allowed one hit and has still faced the minimum of 15 batters in five innings. The hit, a fly ball that should have been caught. Willie Davis had no jump, lost the ball, as Ray pointed out, charged, and actually had it in his glove until he hit the ground, and then it squirted out. That's the only hit and the only man to get aboard. Don Mincher, Frank Quillacy, and Boswell Spot in the sixth. Mincher flied to center in the third. Breaking ball for a strike, 0 and 1. Koufax, on many occasions during the year, will start a game with either a good fastball or a good curve, but not the other. Missed, 1 and 1. Today, from the very outset, he's shown a good fastball and a good curve. He has not thrown any off speed, no fork balls. He stayed right with the fastball and curve. There's the off speed. First time he's thrown it. Ball two. You think back of his accomplishments, it's incredible that so many honors should come to one man as have come to Sandy Koufax. Four no hitters, including a perfect game. Most strikeouts in one game in a World Series, 15. Most strikeouts in a series, 23. 18 strikeouts in a regular game. Foul tip, strike two. And today, he might have had another, except for the fly ball that was lost. Just missed with the fastball. Three and two. Sandy has struck out six. Sandy's a boy who was never really interested in baseball. Down goes Minter. And that's seven for him. When Koufax went to the University of Cincinnati in his freshman year, he planned to be an architect. And he had no idea about going out for baseball, except as we understand it, the baseball team was going to make a rather attractive road trip during the Easter holidays to Florida. And so Sandy decided he'd go out for the club so he could make the trip. He's made a lot of trips since then. Top fly, Trususki. Two out and Rich Rollins coming up.
Rollins making his second appearance in the series as a pinch hitter. He batted for Camilo Pasqual in the sixth inning of the third game and hit back to the box to Osteen. Bounced one. One ball and no strikes. The night that Sandy Koufax pitched the perfect game against the Chicago Cubs here at Dodger Stadium. The last inning, he threw harder than any human being I have ever seen throw a baseball, including Koufax. One and oh. Ball two. He has not been behind often today. I know he was 2 0 to Allison in the second inning. Two and one. 55,801 looking at the fifth game of the World Series. For the Dodgers, there's no doubt who will pitch the sixth game. Claude Osteen. But for the Twins, Ball three. The big story in Los Angeles, will Sam Mealy come back with Camilo Pasquale? Will he go to somebody like Jim Perry? Or would he surprise and go with left-handed Jim Merritt? We'll see. Three and one. High fly ball to deep left. Johnson back on the track. It's playable. He's got it. So they're out in order in the sixth, and the score at the end of five and a half innings of play, Dodgers five, Twins nothing. When you see an automobile as proudly beautiful as this Chrysler, you expect it to take special care of you, and it does. The driver's seat adjusts six ways, up, down, forward, and back. The wheel adjusts up or down, in or out, so you can always drive easy and relaxing. Even your passenger never had it so good. And when the sun goes down into dusk, Chrysler's head and rear lights go on automatically. Now you're home. You switch off the motor, but not the lights. They stay on to light your way to the front door and only then go off automatically. Yes, Chrysler does take special care of you. Move up to all the luxury of the Chrysler way of life. Bottom of the sixth inning at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers leading the Minnesota Twins 5 to nothing, And right-hander Jim Perry comes out of the Twins bullpen to pick up. So the Twins had complete games in the first two games in Minnesota from Jim Grant and Jim Codd. And in coming to Los Angeles, the Twins have now used nine pitchers in the three games here. Jim Perry making his first World Series appearance. He won 12 and lost 7 in the regular season with a fine ERA of 2.6. He started 19, completed 4, and is dropped in in relief today. The Dodgers will have Maury Wills, Jim Gilliam, and Willie Davis. Wills is 2 for 3, and he has 8 hits in the series, so he's top dog with the bat. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit, one error for the Twins. Wills has stolen three bases in the series. He scored twice today and stolen once. All one. If Perry pitches any appreciable baseball today, it would just about remove him from a possible candidate for the sixth game as a starter. Strike. 
One and one. The corners are up. Killebrew and Mincher in on the grass. One and two. Mousy, as the Dodgers call the captain. Two and two. Morey did not learn to become a switch hitter until the middle of the 1958 season when he was at Spokane. And the manager who gave him the go-ahead is the manager of the Braves, Bobby Bragan. Hit into right center. In a hurry is Oliva and Nosek. It drops in, and Morey's going to keep on going. He's in there. That means for the Dodgers, who are not known for their hitting, in four out of the five games, they've had ten hits. And it's a double for Wills. His second double of the day. And it gives Morey three doubles in the series. Gilliam, of course, will try and pull to get Wills over to third. Ball one. Gilliam's first World Series, 1953, when he was Rookie of the Year. On the corner, one and one. Maury Wills at second base. He is three for four today, and he now has nine hits in the series. So he has become the big man with the bat. Ball two, fastball away. Two and one. If you're not keeping score when the Twins come up in the seventh inning, they'll have Zoilo Versailles, Joe Nosek, and Tony Oliva. Wills waiting to be picked up. Jim Perry, the third Minnesota pitcher. He tried to pull, hit a fly ball to shallow center, and Versailles goes out, makes the catch. One away, and here is Willie Davis. Willie is one for two, has stolen two bases, scored a run, but of course becomes a pivotal figure in today's story because of the fly ball hit by Killebrew, his late start, and the fact that he eventually dropped it after a diving try for a base hit. Fouled away. You can put your mind at ease if you're worrying about Willie worrying. <laughs> Willie Davis' philosophy, as far as baseball is concerned, he sums it up this way. It's not my life. It's not my wife. So why worry? Patiently waiting. Up 
Five nothing Dodgers, one out, bottom of the sixth. Willie Davis trying to pick him up. Lou Johnson on deck. Down he goes. Lou Johnson had some feelings about the World Series. Here's what he said just before the start of today's game. Well, we're down to the fifth game, and uh, well, I'm uh, a little more tense today than I think it was, and it was the first game because uh, the first game I know we took four games to win it, and now it's down to where we have to take uh, two games to win it. So, uh, you know, uh, at the, today's game, we got a great advantage on them because we got one of the greatest pitchers in baseball going for us, Sandy Koufax. Lose one for three. Strike breaking ball. Two out in the sixth inning. Five to nothing Dodgers. Five runs, ten hits. The Twins no runs, one hit. The Twins with Tot, Boswell, and now Perry. Wills at second. Last ball. 0 oh and 2. Roy Campanella, when he played with the Dodgers, always referred to the fastball as the express and the curveball as the local. That was the express. Will's going to third, and it's fouled away. Morey will try to steal no matter the score. His philosophy is simply stated, just as a pitcher has to work every fourth day, and just as a hitter needs plenty of practice to hit, so a base dealer has to run all the time to keep his rhythm. So never mind the score. If he has a chance, he will accept it as an opportunity. Fly ball to right field. Oliva over. Sunglasses glistening. That'll do it. No runs ahead, a man left, and the score at the end of six, Dodgers five, twins nothing. We pause now for station identification. As we go to the seventh inning, five to nothing Dodgers, the Dodgers make a change. John Kennedy takes over at third base. John and Minnesota figure prominently. Kennedy made his major league debut against the Minnesota Twins. Came up to bat while Dick Stigman was pitching a no hitter. And in his first at bat, Homer to break up the no hitter. Later on, Washington tied the score. Stigman wound up not having anything to do with it. For the Twins in the seventh inning, Zoilo Versailles. Joe Nosek and Tony Oliva. Sandy Koufax has just one blot on his record. The fly ball single in the fifth inning. He has faced the minimum 18 batters in six innings. Because after the pop fly single, Earl Batty grounded into a double play. One other play where Koufax needed help. In the first inning, Nosek hit to the hole, Wills backhanded and threw him out. Koufax has struck out seven. Strike. begin preparing for a starting assignment the day before. It takes a good hour and a half to two hours to really get him loose. Fastball, one and two. Koufax has been blessed with many physical pluses. 
He has extremely long fingers, which help to give him a great deal of rotation on the ball. Tremendous muscular development in the back. The minus, of course, the traumatic arthritic condition of the left elbow. He will soak that elbow a good 45 minutes in ice after every game. Curveball. That is strikeout number eight. Joe Nosick grounded to the hole in the first inning, and Wills made a fine play to get him. Then he rolled out to Wills in the fourth inning. Ball one. Five runs, ten hits, no errors for the Dodgers. They have left seven. No runs, a scratch single, and one error for the Twins. They have not left anybody. Koufax won 26 in the league. Hit to the hole. Backhanded by Wills. The throw, not in time. Maury could not get anything on the throw, and Nosek, exceptionally fine runner, legged it out. Infield single. Wills could not set himself to throw. Watch. He has to throw almost on the run, and it was a high throw. Nosek just did beat it on a bang-bang play. That is hit number two. In a sense, it takes the stigma off the other base hit in the fifth. And here is Tony Oliva. Hit back to the box, struck out. Tried to bunt in the first inning. Ball one. Koufax, only the third left-hander in National League history ever to win 26 games. The other two left-handers, Giants. Rube Marquard and Carl Hubble. Hubble last did it in 36 and then Koufax this year. Ball two. One out, seventh inning, five nothing Dodgers. Parker not holding Nosek. Joe doesn't figure to do much running, trailing by five. In there. Two and one. Sandy's angry at himself. That's the first time he has, let's say, dropped the poker face. He immediately assumes it again. Three and one. That might be the only three ball count on a batter he's had. Three and one to Tony Oliva. In there. Checking for those of you who were interested in such things, Rich Rollins had a three and one count when he flied to left. So perhaps that's the other one. Pretty good tip off on a pitcher is to check the ratio of strikeouts against walks. Koufax on the incredible side, almost five to one. Five strikeouts for every walk. Three and two. Got him. And the bat were rolling all the way out towards Krasuski. That is the ninth strikeout for Sandy Koufax. A 
Well, let's see. Koufax struck out 15 against the Yankees, came back with eight to give him 23. In his brief appearance in six innings at Minnesota, he had nine to give him 32 and nine today. That's 41 strikeouts in his last four World Series games. Ball one. Koufax's other World Series was in 1959. He lost to Bob Shaw and the Chicago White Sox won to nothing at the Coliseum. The run scoring while the Dodgers were turning in a double play. Ball two. In that 59 game, in nine innings, he struck out seven. Fouled away. <laughs> Two and one to Harmon Killebrew. He struck out and singled. Harm is five for 13 in the series. Driven into the left field corner, and Johnson is there to glove it. No run. The hit, a man left. And the score at the end of six and a half innings of play, the Dodgers five, the Twins nothing. Dodge and Fargo trucks work harder and longer for you. And now, another message from Chrysler. September 26, 1962. Chrysler Canada Limited announced the five-year or 50,000-mile powertrain warranty. These cars carried it, the 1963 Chrysler-built cars. Today, many of these cars have new car warranty left. Think of this when you're buying a new 1966 car. Think of still having warranty protection in 1968, 69, or even 70. Make sense to buy a car or truck from Chrysler. A reminder, next Sunday, NBC will present three regional American Football League games. The Buffalo Bills will face the Kansas City Chiefs. The San Diego Chargers will meet the Boston Patriots. The Denver Broncos and the Houston Oilers meet at Denver. AFL Football Live, mostly in color and exclusively on NBC. Check your local listings for the game and time in your city. 5-0 Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. Fairly Parker and Krasuski against Jim Perry. Fairly a double and a single in three trips. Ball one. Ron's double picked up a run. Right. One and one. Fairly a high price bonus boy off the campus of USC. Ball two, two and one. Jim Perry, third pitcher for Minnesota. Jim Cott and Dave Boswell preceded him. Ball three. Batty's throw winding out in center field where Quillacy will chase it. Quillacy involved in a pretty big play in the first inning on the sacrifice by Willie Davis. Frank had a throw get away for an error. Three balls, one strike. Hit to the hole. 
Backhanded by Versailles. No play this time. He's all over the place. Boy, he's a fine ball player. Mm. Zoilo Versailles. Base hit for Fairley. Now let's find out what Wes Parker is thinking about or was thinking about before the start of this game. I think the twin pitchers have been experimenting with me pretty much as far as pitching is concerned. They've been moving the ball around some, uh, like Grant have pitched me outside, and then he's moved the ball inside. But uh, the fellow that's pitching today, Cott, I believe he'll try and throw me fastballs away and then perhaps come in with sliders and curveballs. It's really hard to say exactly how they're going to pitch me right now, but I, I think they'll be moving the ball around on me. Ball one to West. Hit back to the box, grounded out. Fly deep to left on a hit and run play. Dodgers have 11 hits in the game. That gives them 48 hits in the five games. The bunt. Perry down to pick it up. So the sacrifice works. Fairly moves up 90 feet. And the battle will be Dick Krasuski. Kosuski single to the hole at short, walked and flied to left. When the Twins hit in the eighth inning, if you're not keeping score, they are due to send up Earl Batty, Bob Allison, and Don Mincher. Dodgers scored twice in the first, twice in the third, and once in the fourth. Same spot. Strike two. Fastball at the knees on the corner. Breaking ball, slider, strike three. So two fast balls and a slider, and down goes Krasuski. Second strikeout for Jim Perry. Johnny Klipstein, the right-hander, loosening up in the Minnesota bullpen, and Dick Stigman, the left-hander. Here's Johnny Roseborough, sacrifice, struck out, and walked. And with the pitcher to follow, they will walk Roseboro and take their chances on Sandy, who has struck out three times today. Ball four. Go Roseboro to first. Fairly at second and an ovation building up for Sandy Colfax. <laughs> Colfax struck out three times today. Five nothing Dodgers, two out, seventh inning. When Sandy first came up to the Dodgers, he never hit the ball at all. Then it got so where he'd hit an occasional foul. Now he's getting a base hit. In comes Fairley. It's six to nothing Dodgers. Getting an ovation and a standing ovation from everyone along the right field line. The Dodgers with at least one hit in every inning and have now scored in the seventh to score at least one run against every pitcher. Four against Hot, one against Boswell, and this one against Perry. 
Wills has two doubles and a single in four trips. Two out, two on, six nothing Dodgers. The corners are up again, despite the fact there are two outs. We say despite the fact, because most baseball men will tell you that a bunt with two out is not a good play. However, leading by six runs, anything goes. One and one. At second base, Johnny Roseboro. And at first, the mayor of Los Angeles, Sandy Koufax. There goes Roseboro, and it's fouled off. One and two. So Roseboro was going. Koufax was not. Two and two. Wills waiting on Perry. Base hit. Roseborough is coming home. So the run is over. Kofax held at second. It is seven to nothing Dodgers. Two runs and four hits charged to Perry. Seven runs, 13 hits for the Dodgers. And here is John Kennedy. His first at bat, he came in defensively in two other games. Jim Gilliam went two for four today. Strike. So Jim Perry has allowed two runs and four hits, walked one, struck out two. One and one. coming over it's doubtful out of play Dodgers scored twice in the first twice in the third once in the fourth twice in the seventh and that's why Sandy smiling Fly ball to shallow left. Allison started the wrong way, but the big man comes and one hands it in fair ground. Bob started to go back and came in. The Dodgers settle for two runs, three hits, and leave two. And at the end of seven, the score the Dodgers seven, the Twins nothing. Plymouth Belvedere. There's something about a brand new sparkling Plymouth Belvedere that sets a man a dreaming. Fireball O'Hare, champion of the world's most grueling cross-country rallies, yet again sets out to smash records all across the country in his hot new Plymouth Belvedere. No test is too hazardous as Fireball meets every challenge. And who is once again the unbeatable champion? The unconquerable O'Hare and his hot new Belvedere satellite. Yes, Plymouth Belvedere sets a man a-dreaming. But man, what dreams. And it's the kind of car that fits a young family's budget. Remember, folks, for 66, there are two great Plymouths. The hot new Belvedere and the big new Fury. 
Both cars are backed by Plymouth's famous warranty. Belvedere, Fury, Santa, greatest. As we go to the eighth inning, the Dodgers seven runs, 13 hits, and no errors. They have left nine. The Twins no runs, two hits, and one error. They have left one. Sandy Koufax in the seventh inning when he singled. That was his first World Series base hit. He'll be pitching to Earl Batty, Bob Allison, and Don Mincher. He has struck out nine without a walk and has allowed two singles to the hole at short by Joe Nosek in the seventh inning and a fly ball single to center off the glove of Willie Davis by Harmon Killebrew in the fifth. Sandy, in seven innings, has faced 22 men, just one above the minimum. Batty flied to right, grounded into a double play. Eighth inning, seven nothing Dodgers. Fastball, low. Bounce it to Wills. Throws him out. Here's Bob Allison. In the Dodger bullpen, on your left, number 15, Bob Miller. On your right, number 39, Howie Reed. Slow curve, ball one. Allison struck out twice. He's one for nine in the series. And another record. Two and zero to Bob Allison. Ball three. So, to my knowledge, that's the third time he's had a three-ball count on the batter, and it is the first time he has had a three-ball count without a strike. Now he has the strike. Eighth inning, seven nothing Dodgers. Ball four, and that's the first pass issued by Colfax. Mincher has flied to center and struck out. Don 0 for 2. 3 for 16. In looking over the Minnesota lineup, Joe Nosick has avoided the strikeout. Earl Batty has avoided the strikeout. And that's it in the starting lineup. Everybody else bitten at least once. One hopper, one-handed by Wills, backhanded it to Suski, over to Parker, double play. Oh. No runs, no hits, no errors. At the end of seven and a half, seven to nothing Dodgers. Bottom of the eighth, seven to nothing Dodgers. In the first game of the series, the Dodgers made a bizarre double play on a high throw to Wills, who bounced his throw to first. But take a look at this one. This is a gem. Everybody had a part in that one. One-handed by Wills, the high twisting throw by Trususki, and Parker dug it out. Okay, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson, Ron Fairley, Looper in the center, base hit. Fourteen hits for the Dodgers, at least one hit in every inning. Of course, to the Minnesota Twins, they have gone through the rigors of a long year. 
And every professional knows there are days like these, or like this one. You only have to win by one. So they'll be at each other in Minnesota with Claude Osteen and perhaps Camilo Pasquale. The Twins, during the course of the regular season, lost four in a row only twice. Johnson has won for four, singled in the third. Fouled away. Seven runs, 14 hits, no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and one error for the Twins. Fouled away. He squirted that one. 0 oh 2. The Dodgers with 14 hits. That ties their high for a World Series game. Direct opposite to yesterday, a lot of their hits got out of the infield today. One and two. When the Twins come up in the ninth inning, Frank Quillacy, the pitcher spot, and Zoilo Versailles. Interesting to note that when the Twins won the first two games of the series, the Dodgers hoped that the off day or travel day would slow down their momentum. So if the Dodgers win to make it three straight today, the Twins no doubt will hope that the off day or travel day tomorrow will slow down the Dodgers' momentum. Fouled away. Still one and two. That's Jim Perry, third Minnesota pitcher. Jim Cott, the pitcher of record. Willie Davis held on by Minshew. High drive into center field. Back goes Nosek. Oh, way back to the wall. He's got it. And Willie Davis trots back to first. Joe Nosek. A fine outfielder, got a good jump, just went to the wall and made his play. <laughs> Round of applause for Johnson as he goes back to the dugout. Lou's had himself quite a series. He came into this game hitting 350. Here's Ron Fairley. He's had quite a day. Three straight hits, he's three for four. Fairley has eight hits in the series, five runs batted in. Dodgers seven, twins nothing, one out, bottom of the eighth. Willie's going. The pitch swung on a miss, no chance for a throw. He had such a big jump on Jim Perry. And again, we repeat the Dodger base running philosophy. It is not a case of trying to rub it in. They're just trying to practice. Watch. Well, Willie, that's the third stolen base he's had in this game. And the Dodgers have now stolen nine bases in the series. But they're not really too close to a record. The record is still pretty far out of reach. 0 oh 2. Slider miss, ball one. So Willie had 25 during the season, and he's stolen three today. Wills has a point. Morris says, I don't know why anybody would be mad at me stealing a base, let's say seven to nothing, when a fellow at the plate is trying to hit the ball out for a home run. Outside. 
two and two. Two and two to Ron Fairley. Ball three. Fairley had the key hit yesterday against relief pitcher Alan Worthington. Three and two. High drive to straightaway center. Back goes Nosek. Away back to the track and makes the catch. Tagging up is Willie. He'll go on over to third. So both Lou Johnson and Ron Fairley have sent Joe Nosek to the board for long outs. And with two down, West Parker the batter. Parker and Roseboro are the only two starters without a hit today. Wes has sacrificed 0 for 3, and Roseboro has had only one official at bat. He's 0 for 1. Ball 1. Twins in the ninth, Quillacy, the pitcher, and Versailles. Ball two. Willie at third, waiting to be picked up. That's Coach Preston Gomez. Strike. Throw down to third. Not in time. Willie, however, does get into the record books with his three steals in one game today. Honus Wagner stole three in one game. He really in some great company. Jim Perry has allowed five hits and two runs since coming into relief in the sixth inning. Two and two. Check ball three. If you're wondering when Rogers Hornsby stole three in one World Series game, it's a way back, 1909. Uh, Honus Wagner, excuse me, fouled away. Honus Wagner in 1909 stole three bases in a World Series game. Three and two. Strike three. The Parkers caught. No runs ahead of man left. And the score at the end of eight. Dodgers seven. Twins nothing. Have a ball in a valiant sedan. Get out. Have fun in a valiant sedan. There's room for everyone and more in a valiant sedan. Raise the roof in a valiant convertible. Get out and go in a valiant convertible. Feel the fresh breeze blow in a valiant convertible. Valiant hard top, get out and swing in a valiant hard top. Now's the time for a thing in a valiant hard top. And remember, nobody beats valiant for value. 
ninth inning, the totals through eight. Seven runs, 14 hits, and no errors. 11 left for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and one error. One left for the Twins. Koufax has walked one. He has struck out nine. He'll pitch to Frank Quillacy. Then the pitcher's spot. And Zoilo Versailles. Sandy trying to win his third in World Series competition. Out away. He has quite a record when you think his two losses, he allowed one earned run in each game. And today, trying to pitch a shutout. Hit to right field, fairly breaking to the line, but it's going to be trouble. Drops in. And Quillacy holds on. A throw back of him to Roseboro. Not in time. John almost hung him out to dry. So single to right for Frank Quillacy. That's Frank's third hit. And here is Sandy Valdespino. Sam Mealy used Rich Rollins as a pinch hitter earlier and now sends up a left-hand pinch hitter against Koufax. Ball one. Dodger bullpen is active. They'll keep an eye on Koufax. Ball two. In there. Colfax during the regular season started 41 games and completed 27 of them. Line drive base hit on a fastball up and in. Quillacy will go 90 feet and stop at second. The Twins are not going to gamble trailing 7-0 in the ninth inning. So back-to-back -back singles for Minnesota. And the batter will be Zoilo Versailles. Valdespino, a solid single to right field. For Sandy Valdespino, that is his third hit in 10 World Series at-bats. Versailles has 0 for 3. He sparkled with the glove today. 6 for 20 in the series with four runs batted in. John Kennedy up even with the bag at third. Nobody out. Runners at first and second for the Twins. Curveball fouled away. Down to Billy Martin. Left-hander Ron Paranoski, right-hander Bob Miller. Somebody did some figuring in the press box. The Dodger team batting average for the first five games of the World Series is 302. Curveball. to Zoilo. Good curve. And that is Sandy Koufax's 10th strikeout. 
Friends, this game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. So yesterday, Don Drysdale struck out 11. Koufax today comes back with 10, and this year it's the 22nd time that Koufax has struck out 10 or more this year. Ball two. One out, ninth inning, seven nothing Dodgers. High again. Well, he's struggling now in the ninth inning. Kulisi single to right. Valdespino single sharply to right. Struck out Versailles on curve. That's Kulisi and that's Valdespino with the gum. He's really something. Strike. Three and one. Sandy has walked one. Allison back in the eighth. I think Joe Nosick helped out that time. It looked like he went after a fastball above the shoulders. Full count, one out. Line drive at Wills to Trasuski, double play. It's all over. Double play, six to four. In the ninth inning, no runs, two hits, one man left. And the score, the Dodgers, seven. Seven runs, 14 hits, and no errors. The Twins, no runs, four hits, and one error. Sandy Koufax, the winner. Jim Cott, the loser. The Dodgers have won three in a row. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. Meet a man who's going places. A kind of man who owns and drives a big new 66 Plymouth Fury. Fury has a roomy action-styled interior. Fury, a big action car. A big luxury car with a smooth big car torsion air ride. Clean, crisp lines. Real easy to handle. With a performance choice up to the new 440 cubic inch Commando V8. Nothing goes like Fury, the big new action car. A man's kind of car. The big new Plymouth Fury 466. The kind of car you'll want to take the long way home in. Fury is backed by Plymouth's famous warranty. Belvedere, Fury. They're the greatest. At Dodger Stadium, it was all Los Angeles. We'll find out about the rest of the series in Minnesota. And to finish up, give you the totals and the lockup shop for today. Let's go back to the voice of the Minnesota Twins. Here's Ray Scott. Thank you, Ben. For the Dodgers, seven runs, 14 hits, no errors, and 11 men were left. For the Twins, no runs, four hits, one error, and two men are left. And if ever statistics going into a series have been proven to be misleading, it would have to be on the subject of the Dodgers' batting attack. As Vin mentioned a moment ago, through five games, the Dodgers, who came into the World Series with, we believe, the lowest team batting average of any National League team in history, the Dodgers have hit a resounding 302 in the series. And so Sandy Koufax squares his 1965 World Series record at one win and one loss. And likewise, for the losing pitcher today, Jim Cott, 
Jim stands at one and one. Kopax struck out ten. Cott went two and a third innings, allowed six hits. Boswell went two and two-thirds innings, Dave Boswell. Jim Perry pitched the last three. And so, in a way, I guess you could say it's Dodger Stadium, three wins. Metropolitan Stadium, two wins. And the scene will ship to Minnesota with an off day tomorrow for travel. Now, the Twins will depart approximately an hour and a half from now from Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers, meanwhile, will work out at Dodger Stadium tomorrow and then go to Minnesota. The Twins win the two games on their home grounds and the Dodgers come back with three in a row. We believe it will be Claude Osteen in the sixth game for the Dodgers. Of that, we are reasonably certain. For the Twins, we must guess. Our guess would be either Camilo Pasquale or Jimmy Merritt. And so, tune in Wednesday at 2.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the sixth game of this 1965 World Series when your hosts, as today, again will be Chrysler Corporation, famous for quality engineering. Today's host, Plymouth, and your local Plymouth dealer. And Gillette, the people who know men best. This is Ray Scott saying goodbye from Dodger Stadium. <laughs>